can't believe it. My name is Clark Wolf. I'm the MC for the main stage this year. How are you guys doing? Is this not the best LA Comic Con that you've been to? Oh my God. So this next panel uh, is, is one that I personally have been looking forward to all day. I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because I think you wanna hear from them. This is the Hellboy reunion. Give it up for Clark Wolf! Do I have anything in my teeth? No. Good? We're good? Oh, you got some enamel in there. So. Okay, fire away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's talk about it, guys. It's been 15 years since Hellboy wow. came out in theaters that first well, Hellboy. Well, it hasn't been 15 years since it's Hellboy. Good. It's been 15 years since our Hellboy. Right. <laughs> so when was the first time you guys heard of Hellboy? Well, I heard of Hellboy... What year did we do the first Hellboy, 2003? We filmed in 2003, it came out in 2004. Yeah. So I heard of Hellboy s exactly seven years before we started filming Hellboy 1. Because that's how long Guillermo took to get the movie made. <laughs> well, how about you, Doug? I mean, for, me, for me, I was cast closer to the, uh, to the filming and uh, I had not heard of Hellboy, I know it's terrible, I had not heard of the Hellboy comics. So when Guillermo uh, came, came uh, and offered me Abe Sapien, uh, he gave me the uh, script and a pile of graphic novels at the same time and said, read up and get back to me tonight. <laughs> I, I had like hours to do all, to, to study up and say, yes, I love it, I'm doing it. And I did. And Ron, you and uh, Guillermo had a relationship going all the way back to Kronos through Blade. Um, yeah. You were, uh, it was you and he working on getting this movie made, and there are all sorts of horror movies about executives saying, well, what if he only becomes Hellboy when he's mad? You know, that's a pretty famous one that Gamble's talked about. What, I mean, was there any point where you guys were like, guys, this might not get made? Well, I had nothing to do with getting the film made. I, I had a lot to do with t telling Guillermo if he wanted to get it really made, he should, should stop using my name, because <laughs> that was not going to get anybody to write a check of that magnitude um, since I was uh, obscure and, uh, and invisible, basically. Um, but he has his, his quirky little idea, you know, these directors, they're so weird. And he sucked to his guns, and that's why it took him seven years. Uh, but it was all... I mean, it was all Guillermo versus the studios, and um, I was basically just in the background, um, waiting, uh, listening to some of the anecdotes, uh, like some of the notes that he got, like you just mentioned, you know, can he just be Hellboy when he gets mad, you know? There's another character like that, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah pretty famous. <laughs> kind of a hulky guy. Yeah, he's, he's signing right over there. <laughs> yeah. Greenish. Um, Hey Lou, how you doing? Oh, is he here? Um, but yeah, one of one of the notes that he got from some really brilliant executives at Universal Studios was, "Does he have to be red?" Oh, oh. that hurts. So I think his first wife was red. I don't know. He had, <laughs> he had some sort of um, thing. But the famous story also is that Guillermo had you in mind. And then Mike Mignola had his character that he had been doing since the early 90s. And he also had a specific actor in mind. And they said, well, who are you thinking of? Who are you thinking of? And at the same time, they said the same person. Is that the way you heard it? That's the way I heard it. I never believed it, but that's how I heard it. <laughs> so once you guys were rolling, uh, well, how did you guys meet on set, the two of you guys? Was it like in the movie? Did you guys team up? You know, we knew each other for seven months. and. And I had no idea that that was Doug Jones on the Adult Out of Blue shit. 
just like, I, I always just saw him as like, and, you know, because he used to get there three, four hours ahead of me, and I was there for five hours in the yeah. makeup chair. And uh, I don't think we saw who, each other for real until the rap party. I think we, 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 we brushed at the uh, the concierge level of the hotel for breakfast one day, and I, I was like, hey, Ron. He's like, yeah, who are you? <laughs> oh, that's a, I'm the, okay. <laughs> I said to him, you have a really familiar voice. You sound really a lot like the guy who was playing Abe Sapien. <laughs> and is this thing on? It is. <laughs> this is some funny shit, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm no Kevin Smith, but come on. Right, right. <laughs> Kevin wore him out. Just yell smoochie boochies or whatever Kevin does. I think they'll be okay. We'll be back on your side. <laughs> Oh, we, how long do you guys shoot for when you're spending six, seven, eight hours in makeup? How, how, how much of that is actually in production? You guys are not doing 12-hour days, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, no. Still, still film a 10, 12-hour day. 18-hour days were, were the norm, honestly. I, I didn't tell Hellboy 2, especially. Six months in Budapest, Hungary, six days a week. When, he, when, when we started Hellboy, Doug was 325 pounds. Yeah. That's what I'll do. Too. That is what a 20-hour workday will do. Is this thing on? What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, what are some of those difficulties? You guys are both like, like covered in makeup. I know the problem. He's asking too many serious questions. <laughs> well, there's only. I mean, you're running around it with their pranks on set. Is that what you want me to ask? Pranks. I'm guessing there were. I don't know. Did you have any energy, energy for pranks? I didn't. Uh, no, you guys are covered in makeup. How do you even act through that stuff? I do have a fun story, though. Go for uh, it. Uh, from Hellboy 1. Uh, we, uh, we were arriving in the garbage truck, our, our vehicle. Uh, our, that was like our Batmobile. Uh, a garbage truck. And we were arriving to the scene of a crime or the scene of a, of a happening. And we'll have to walk down a really long corridor, make a left turn to walk down another long corridor before we see uh, Professor Broom father uh, figure to uh, Hellboy, played by John Hurt. He was on a staircase. So, Mark, bless his soul. Uh, so we were walking I Now, mind you, in my Abe Sapien makeup, I'm basically blind, right? So I have like little tear ducts that I look through with these big eyes out here that are built into the mask. Over those eyes were a pair of goggles with water in them. So it's like, and they were fogging up at that because it was cold in this set we were on. So having to walk down this long corridor, make a left turn, walk down that, and have a stopping mark that we stop and then look to the right, I had to do this all by feel, and I could, I could barely make out the shoulder of Ron. As long as I knew where that shoulder was, I was good. So here we are walking down the corridor on, on the first take, and action! Walking, 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 we make the turn, good, I'm still doing good, yeah, 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 I hit Ron. And because uh, we stopped before I thought we were supposed to stop. And uh, so I'm at the wrong angle. I'm facing this way. We're supposed to be looking that way. And uh, so I kind of gently try to get myself. I can't see anything. So I put my hand on Ron's back to get the trajectory of his back so I can like, because I didn't know where the cameras were either. <laughs> so I'm touching, I, I'm doing this and going, ah, OK, OK, I think I'm good. And we were much closer together. So, Guillermo del Toro yells, Cut! Doug Jones, can we do one more take without you feeling up Ron's ass? Yeah, I try to tell him, you know, that's not my shoulder. You know? <laughs> Apparently. I know, I know, I know I have, you know, a very well-formed ass, but the tail should have given it away. He had that long leather coat on, in my defense. I, I, I couldn't feel the whole curvature, I didn't know. And the cameras were behind us at that point, so they were seeing the entire feeling of it. <laughs> the good news is that from that point on, Doug and I roomed together <laughs> and saved the production a lot of money after that, yeah, exactly. on that extra hotel room. <laughs> Did you take anything from working with John Hurt? The man is a legend. What did you guys glean from working with him? Um, boy, I was going to say something really snarky, but the guy's dead. Come on. <laughs> Can't defend himself. I just... Uh, there are these moments when you get around people who 
you are truly awed by, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's less and less of them walking the planet, you know. Like we lost Robert Forrester today, you know, he was a giant. Mm -hmm. Jackie Brown, remember Jackie Brown? Yeah. yeah. But John Hurt was one of these guys that I'd known almost since I decided to become an actor, and he was so much larger than life and so legendary, and the fact that he was in my presence playing a family member, you know, in the same movie as me, I never really, um, I think you were asking for something more fun than this. No, 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 it's, it's good. No, it's just good. I was awed by John Hurt, and, and, and I was awed by what a pure, pure actor he was. Yes. And, uh, I used to say to him, you know, if there was no acting profession, John, you'd be fucking homeless because <laughs> there's nothing else you could do except this, but thank God there's this. He was born for that, yeah, absolutely. He was a legend, indeed. Uh, speaking and I really will apologize to anybody who brought their kids about my bad, <laughs> my shitty language. <laughs> they should just follow you on Twitter, I'm sure. I'm going to try to do better. By not way, really, not by really. The way, uh, uh, I also ran, speaking of our co-stars from Hellboy 1, uh, Rupert Evans, who played uh, Agent, young Agent Myers in that movie, I just ran into him in New York City, uh, uh, and he says to say hello and love to all of you. Um, he's, he's, yeah, sweet guy. He's currently on the CW's Charmed. Well, let's talk about another member of your BPRD. Yes. Uh, Selma. Selma Blair. <laughs> Selma couldn't be here. Selma could not be here today, but she did send me a textual message on the textual device. Uh, and I am, I am to read this aloud to all of you, if you don't, if you, if you will indulge me for a moment. <clears throat> Selma says, uh, please tell them I love being with the guys I love so much. She's talking about us. Uh, I love meeting the fans. She said guy, okay? She was... No, no, guys, uh, it's got oh. an S. Um, I love meeting the fans, even if my line is shorter than these famous dudes. <laughs> she does fine when she's at conventions, she does. Uh, I still have a compromised immune system from a transplant, so this was impossible to be there today. But I so hope I am invited next year to share the love. Many Liz, Sherman, flames, and hugs. All my love, Selma. And how have you guys kept on uh, through the years? Do you guys stay in contact? Like, obviously, Selma is battling MS. She's pretty public about it. It's a pretty brave battle. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, indeed. Um, do you guys still, I mean, you talked to her. Why didn't she text Ron? Because I, I texted her saying, <laughs> do you have a message for today? Right. <laughs> do you guys still talk to each other after Hellboy 1 and 2? Yes. Yes. Pretty regular. Always, and yeah. when you, in, I know there, there was a lot of work going into making a third movie with Guillermo. We did not get the third film, the, the, hopefully the closure to the story you guys introduced in one and two. Mm. Um, but we did get a, a Hellboy that I enjoyed with David Harbour. Did you guys see the film? Did you guys enjoy the, the most awesome. recent Hellboy film? What were some... <laughs> did you see it, Dick? I did see it. I wanted to know what, what we were up uh, uh, with. So, Ron, you did not see it. I'm a, I'm a blank slate. Okay. And, and that's probably a good thing, you know, probably, yeah. I, I, yeah, I saw it. I can still say bad stuff about it, though. I mean, it, it, not having seen it. But. It's like Martin Scorsese talking about Marvel movies and now that he doesn't like them. And David Harbour is a lovely fellow, by the way. Yes, he's, he is. He really is, yeah. yeah. If you guys got a chance to make your Hellboy 3, what did you want to do in the, in the third film that maybe you didn't see done with the characters in the first two? Where would you like to see your characters go? Well, Doug wanted to just see Period. anything. <laughs> he wanted to just basically see where he was going. That's true. That is true. He didn't give a shit where he was going. He just wanted to see. I just want to see that place. He loves it. Instead of just you know having his hand on my ass the whole time. <laughs> uh, but Ron, the second movie is different than the first. Like in a lot of ways, there's a love interest for Liz's character. Like you kind of have a rival in the first movie that you don't have in the second one, and now you're the main in interest for Liz's character, you, your character's given a bit much more to do in that second movie. How would you guys have expanded on it? How would you have liked to see, have seen it expanded if you got into the third film? Well, of course, there's no, I mean, one, one doesn't, you know, begin to let one's mind wander about 
a, what the third film should look like when one is in the hands of somebody like Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo um, always conceived of this as a trilogy, and everything that happens in the first two films will be resolved in the third one, because there won't be any others. Right. And the, the things that needed to be resolved were epic in proportion. It was like Hellboy is the beast of the apocalypse. He's summoned to Earth with an oracle, which is non-negotiable, which is that he will, he will be the seed of destruction of all mankind. The second movie ends with her being pregnant with twins. There's what sets up this final resolve. You know, um, Hellboy has been raised to do good, but born to do evil. So he's constantly has this Nietzschean philosophical uh, dialectic going on inside of him about nurture versus, nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Which one of those things will prevail, and what does he have to give up in order for the good one to prevail? That's what the third film was meant to be, which is why I felt like it was a cr criminal that we didn't finish the trilogy because everything that you guys had invested yourself in in the first two films mm -hmm. was all about how that c comes to a close. And that's why I personally mounted the kind of uh, campaign I did to get the third film made, but just too many mo mo moving parts and too many people with schedules and stuff, so it didn't happen. I think you guys all would have wanted to see that. I know I would have. Wanted to. <laughs> all right, we have a microphone floating out there somewhere for you guys to ask questions. Uh, can the person with the microphone raise their hands? Right, we got a microphone coming over here. Make your way, if you can, to the railing and ask that question. I got you hopping up and down. Yeah, make right your way, there. Please, make your way to the railing if you want to ask a question. Please, crowd surf them over there, however you want to get there. <laughs> Pass them along. I know there's a faster way. All right, thank you. Uh, two things. First of all, I speak for everyone when I say, we're not worthy! We're not worthy! Woo! And second, for so, you... So true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a question for you, Ron. Like, in your personal opinion, like, not depending on the pit fans, but who do you think would win in a three-way battle? The Lich, Slade, or Hellboy? <laughs> I love those hypothetical questions. Because <laughs> there's no right answer and there's no wrong answer. Yeah. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's come uh, right down the line. Uh, oh, my turn? Cool. Hi, guys. Hi. So um, you said that Guillermo gave you some uh, comments. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cutest person ever here. <laughs> yeah at this convention, maybe in Lo Greater Los Angeles. <laughs> Didn't you I, I wish you could see her. <laughs> You're so sweet. But, um, okay, nerdy side. So you said you read some of the uh, comic books of, you know, Hellboy. So, would you want one of those stories to be into the third movie if it were to happen? Like, is there, was there a story that Hellboy, Apes, Aping, etc. went through that felt like would be really good to bring on the screen? Right. Uh, am I wrong? Didn't, didn't Mike Mignola bring that the Hellboy 2, that seed of destruction, or that, that destruction in the, in the end of it. I think his comic books did complete that story, didn't they? Well, you know, the, the making of the film, the, the comic books are a jumping off point for right. something that needs to be original and more uh, suited for the big screen. So there are obviously elements of the, 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 the saga, how Hellboy comes to be where he gets summoned from, which, which all appear in the first film, but eventually Guillermo has to turn it into a, a, a story that stands on its own, because each of the comic books are kind of like little tales, whereas the, 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 the trilogy was meant to be one big saga. And uh, so there's your, your answer. I don't know if it's very useful to you. But. <laughs> the, uh, also, the, the BPRD comic books, uh, Abe Sapien was more of a central figure in those. And there was some talk years ago about maybe even possibly doing a TV series. Uh, so I, and that was brought up to me, but never panned out either. So. Well, now we have streaming services. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Doug, yes. if we were to have a streaming service, in a BPRD show, we've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. over at ABC. If Universal was to get it together and make a streaming service, 
and they were to say, hey, let's get a BPRD show. Would you guys be interested in being a part of that? I would always, I always wanted to see Hellboy in a walker. You know? yeah. <laughs> Don't run so fast. Hey, I'm yeah. coming. I'll just speak for myself, but I'm part of the oldest uh, uh, superhero team in history <laughs> right now, I think. So, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, Let, see. let's get the person right next to you. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hi, my name is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Um, I'm going to be that person that asks the personal questions. Do you have a favorite scene that you like to shoot in the movie? Or was there one that meant more to you? That wasn't, that wasn't very personal. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very professional question. Oh, okay. right, that's good. That's good. That's good. I thought you were going to ask me about Never mind. <laughs> yeah. My beauty mark. <laughs> my dimple, <laughs> which I still have, by the way. That's um, a line from a movie I watched last night. <laughs> or that time that I was young and needed the money. That one. <laughs> I hope that satisfies your, your answer, your question. Do you guys have a scene that you look no. back in the films and remember as your favorite? Oh, gosh. I, I, I do. I certainly do. It was a B in Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, when, uh, when Hellboy uh, teaches Abe Sapien how to drink beer for the first time. Yes, and we got to break into a Barry Manilow song, Can't Smile Without You. Oh, favorite, favorite moment ever. Which we'd be happy to recreate right now. <laughs> for the right price. <laughs> so he's a catch, fans. Uh, let's go all the way to the end with the orange shirt. Hi, my name's Madison. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, um, with Hellboy, because of all the prosthetics and the makeup, what was the hardest or most annoying part of that? Oh. Because I know Abe had more of the... <laughs> Poor Abe. <laughs> the, the, the anal probes were <laughs> just a pain in the ass, if I, if I could be so bold. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, I, Whenever you have prosthetic makeup, any kind of process like that, it's going to be, there's, there are challenges to go through, of course. I, my Abe Sapien makeup, and yeah, especially in the first Hellboy movie, I had 12 prosthetic pieces from head to toe when you saw me shirtless with just wearing the shorts. That's a lot of blue fish guy to see and show and make up. So that, took, that process took seven hours a day before I started my work day. So uh, uh, I, I was, it was just the, the sheer sleep deprivation and exhaustion was probably the most annoying part of all that. But when you know that you're making a piece of art like that that will live, and we're talking about it today, this many years later, it, it, you look back at, on it and it was all worth it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You loved it so much you made Shape of Water. <laughs> yes. yes <it> is. <laughs> I, I don't know how many actors have played two fishmen in their life, but I have. <laughs> yeah. All right, Thank let's you. try to get one or two more. Uh, let's go with the Avengers at Infinity War shirt over here. I just kind of want the microphone guy to have the zigzag back and forth. Yeah. Hey, Ron. First of all, thank you for uh, always keep showing up on my favorite online news network, The Young Turks. You are progressive. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, my question to both of you, what is it about Guillermo del Toro that you keep saying yes to him? I mean, is there a moment like, hey, I want you to be my movie? Ah, uh, no, Guillermo. Thanks, though. <laughs> You ever see the size of that guy? <laughs> you know, no is not, you know, like, uh, not an option. He'll hunt you down. It's true. I also think he has friends in the cartel, but I'm... Ah. I've never said that publicly, and I didn't... And you didn't hear it today, okay? Uh, you know, when, when, you, when, you, uh, when Guillermo del Toro offers you a movie role, you know it's going to be a piece of art, no matter what it is, whether it's a big action summer blockbuster movie or one of his smaller art films. Um, he just, he, he's a great storyteller and a visionary, and there's no reason to not be in his movies, ever. Yeah. Let's get one more. So, put your hand up, and actually jump up and down if you can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the yellow hat, let's get you forward. <laughs> there oh, you are. Aw. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. All right, so I know you might have asked, uh, answered this question before, but I know Guillermo del Toro's movies are both very, or very visual and pleasing. What would be your favorite design that he's done? Does he have, it could be a monster, it could be uh, architecture, anything. Because oh. I, I really like all of them. <laughs> I, I have one. Uh, 
uh, another character that I got to play actually in Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, was the Angel of Death. Yeah! Beautiful. That was one of the most stunning makeups and costumes I've ever ever seen, or let alone worn. Yeah, that, that'd be mine, but... I think my favorite design is uh, the fawn in uh, Pan's uh, Labyrinth. Yeah! Which I also played. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> Doug has been in all my favorite Guillermo del Toro movies. <laughs> As opposed to me, I've not been in any of my favorite movies. <laughs> and I've been in six of them. You've been six of them? So have I, yeah. But he, he makes two fucking masterpieces, and I'm not in either. <laughs> well, let's hope there's some more masterpieces involving you guys. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Jeff Jones, Rod Perlman. And let's hope this is Thank not you. the end of these guys in the BPRD. Thank you guys so much, LA Comic Con. Red and Link, huh? Red and Link, is that an online name?